Hi everyone, Pastor Todd here. Welcome back to our daily devotion in the Psalms. Uh, and I'm glad to have you guys with us. And it's really cool to see how many of you have been joining us. And I appreciate the, the those who have started watch parties and who are liking it and sharing it and subscribing over on YouTube and giving us uh, likes over and hearts over on Instagram, like whatever it is. I appreciate the feedback. I appreciate the encouragement and I appreciate you wanting to share God's word with the people in your midst. So that's really cool to see. Uh, continue to do so. Please share this. Please like, please subscribe, follow all of those things so that you can keep up to date on God's word. Let's get into that, by the way. Let's get into Psalm chapter 4. That's where we've been hanging out, and we've seen a lot so far. Uh, David uh, has shown us that it's good to bring our prayers to God. Uh, he has also kind of called out people who are trying to flip the script on God, right, and, and trying to say that he does nothing, um, that he's worthless, and so on and so forth. So we've seen that so far, and last time we talked about uh, the role of anger and how typically when we get angry, we're always angry at someone else. We're always angry at that guy or that girl or maybe even angry at God for some reason. When in reality, our anger should be placed upon ourselves for our own sin, you know, getting into guilt and regret and things like that. But even in that moment, we have a merciful God, and that's good. He loves us and he forgives us every time. We're going to move on from there, uh, from that little even statement of encouragement and hope and mercy from God, and we're going to kind of touch a little bit more back upon like what was being talked about in verse 2, uh, where, where God is, again, kind of calling out people who are uh, rejecting him, who are asking him to prove himself. So let's look at it. Verses 6 and 7 is where we'll be hanging out today. Uh, there are many who say, who will show us some good. Lift up the light of your face upon us, O Lord. You have put more joy in my heart than they have when their grain and wine abound. All right, so let's just look at, the, at verse 6 uh, right away. In verse 6, what we get to see is our, our, our people who are asking God to show himself. Show me some good. You know, it's, you know I, I come from the show me state. You know, there's a reputation of, of people wanting to um, have people prove something, and, and we want to see it. Uh, we, we embrace that which is tangible, and the intangible is very difficult for us. Faith is very difficult for us as humans. We, we like, in a Bible study just the other day, uh, me and a group of men, we were talking about the bright and shiny things that are right in front of our face and, and how we want those things and how we can understand those things. We can control those things and, and they're, they're easy. But faith is, is difficult. Faith is a challenge. Uh, but this is what we are called to. Um, God is, is, is calling out these people who are ridiculing him you know, who are saying, you know, who's going to show us some good? And we want this all the time. We're like, God, you know, I, I just wish that you would show me what to do. I, I wish that you would guide me in the right way. Or, or maybe, God, I, I would know that you were real if you just did X, Y, and Z. But what God has called us to is, is a life of faith, not demanding something out of him. It's a life that, that trusts in him because he has good. And remember, this psalm began by recounting the deeds of God, recounting the times where he has shown himself, remembering all the things that he has done already in our lives. This helps our faith. This is what we need. In Hebrews 11, 1, it says this. Now faith is assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Faith isn't the thing itself. It's not a thing. It's the conviction of the thing. It's the certainty of the thing. It's certainty of Jesus. This is what we need. We don't need God to prove himself. We don't need God to even show himself. Rather, we need him to, what it says in that verse right after that, in verse 7, to bring joy to our hearts. And this is exactly what he does. To bring us encouragement, to bring us love and peace and God does these things for us by lifting us up from our sins, by rescuing us out of evil. God does these things, and he works in mighty, mighty ways in our midst. You can even see in, in Isaiah chapter 9, uh, we usually talk about that passage when, when we get close to, to Christmas. But in, in verse 3, it talks about how, God, you have multiplied our joy, and then it begins to talk about the Messiah, about Jesus. And this is what we get to see. We can recount all that God has done for us in Jesus. And we can look to Jesus. If we need something tangible, he, he came into the flesh. He 
did miracles. He spoke. He, he was here and brought us salvation. He, he resurrected in real flesh, in real blood, and had his feet upon the ground. God has come and he has brought us rescue. But often we want a little bit more. We want something big and we want something noticeable. We, we want God to do things that we expect, but that's not what he's up to. And that can be tough. Uh, there's this little quote from Henri Nouwen, which has helped me understand this little idea. He says this, You can't see the whole path, but there is usually enough light to take the next step and then to trust God's guidance in the moment. You may not know what God is up to in your life. You may not know what he's doing. You, you may not know uh, what the next month is going to look like. You may not know what the next year is going to look like, or for some of you, even the next few days. But God is caring for us. He does give us the light that we need. And more importantly, he gives us himself. He is the good shepherd who leads us in those times when things seem very dark, when things seem very troubling, when we can't see. God cares for us and he brings us his Holy Spirit to be present in our hearts so that we can know that he's there, so that we can experience that joy that comes with the gift of salvation. Jesus has come. He is that tangible thing right in front of us. He is the light on our path. He is what we need. Let's pray. Heavenly Gracious Father, we come to you today not asking you to prove yourself, but asking you to love us in spite of ourselves. Lord, we don't come to you today asking for a sign as the Pharisees and scribes all demanded of Jesus. Lord, help us to simply look upon the cross and to trust in you. Because, God, you've shown us time and time again in those times when we, when we do trust in you, when we believe in you, that we do not see. We experience joy that, that we have not ever before. Lord, bring us that joy and contentment in all that you are doing and all of who you are. Thank you, God, for this day. It's the one that you made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the God who has come bless you all this day. Uh, may he put his joy into your heart and encourage you in every single moment. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. God's blessings to you all, and we'll see you again next time as we conclude Psalm chapter 4. Peace, everyone.